Before you, my friend, sits, stands, squats, Mazda's latest and perhaps greatest effort into breaking into, uh, let's make it officially, breaking into the premium SUV midsize segment uh, in, in every respect, save for one, the brand. But sometimes you can't define a product by the brand, more oftentimes than not, you do. Which is, in a number of ways, some of the issues with this vehicle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going right for it. I'm not wasting any time this time. No, it's gonna be a long video as always, but, but still, because this SUV, Mazda's all new 2023, sorry, 2024 CX-90 is an exceptional offering in the midsize three row SUV. But the thing is that Mazda in this segment in particular is not the only automaker looking to make waves, to play premium, to play luxurious. And that is probably what is causing me the most issues with accepting that Mazda wants about $65,000 for their fully kitted out CX-90 SUV. Look, the segment is really the problem. I just drove a 24 Atlas, which is really nice. There's a new Traverse. There's a recent Pilot. There's, I don't know, Grand Cherokee L. There are Palisades and Tellurides and Pathfinders. The, the competition is ultra fierce. And if you take for a moment all of these models, all of them offer a number of things from a rugged version to an ultra premium version. Some of them offer both. And, and I think despite Mazda's best efforts, forgive me my friends at Mazda Canada, I think, eesh, I think I walked away, I recall walking away from the final generation CX-9, being more impressed by the final product. Because Mazda tried, but didn't try as hard as they have with this. And this is why, uh, this is why I, I don't know. I'm not in love with the CX-90 as I thought I might be. When there's certain things about this vehicle that are just, they're stunning. In some respects, breathtaking. And some elements on paper are fantastical. But in real life, they're no better than the way they were previously. It, it's, I, I am officially disappointed. But the efforts, as far as, and this is, you know, the usual video as we go, you know, the outside design. This is Artisan Red, by the way, which is, which is probably one of the prettiest, richest colors on any sub $120,000 vehicle. I don't know, something like that. Um, we'll give points for that. And, and the interior of this vehicle is superb and almost perfect. But it's when you take it out on the road that things for me kind of fall apart because the image that Mazda is trying to project with this vehicle and what it delivers are slightly, well, on opposing ends of the premium line or they don't quite match. At least they don't in the greater Montreal area. So as I just said, in the following video, we're gonna do the walk around, poke around on the inside and uh, then take it for a inline six, yes, turbocharged ride. Hang in there, please. I mean, other than the background. No, okay, I was gonna say that, you know, when you look at this SUV, there can be no doubt that it is ultra high end. Again, the art is in red and the chrome touches, just a little details here and there, such as, you know, this nice little touch, the trim at the bottom of the door, the name, 
You know, everything about the SUV really screams upscale. But that's probably more to do with the fact that this is, in fact, a top trim signature model. Because if you look at images of the GS, which is only going to be available a little bit later in 2023, you know, on the standard 18-inch uh, wheels and with uh, no chrome or adornment, in the pictures, it, it doesn't look entirely special. But, blah, blah, blah. my goodness, I took my mean pills this morning. It's incredible. But, uh, it, you know, it, it looks premium, but it looks soft at the same time. It's not rugged. It's, it's, it's easy on the eyes. It's attractive. What am I, what am I saying? I'm saying that the, the, the signature, the actual model, I've seen only a handful so far on the road in the greater Montreal area. And, I mean, other than the size, the overall length is like 5.12 meters long. That is massive. Um, it doesn't, it's not striking. It's attractive, yes. Let's say compared to the CX-50, which I just recently drove. Now that is a, an attractive, very good looking, personality packed, mid-size two row SUV. This on the other hand, I don't know. It's, it's too, it's too, I don't know. It's me. It's probably just me. Like I said, I mean, long bonnet. Yeah, it gives you the idea of power, but then you figure, well, there's six cylinders in line under there, so it has to be long. At least this time, it's not faking it. Oof. Oof. I'm going to be blacklisted for sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, pricing in the U.S. for the base uh, Turbo Select, $39,595, and the Turbo S Premium Plus, $59,950. And there are a bunch of trims in between the two in Canada. Thankfully, the trim structure is a lot, much, a lot, much simpler. Where you start with the GS at the forty-five thousand nine hundred dollars, then there's a GSL, there's a GT, there's a GT uh, Plus, I believe. Well, memory just went blank. And then there's this, the Signature, which is sixty-three thousand three hundred dollars. Now, the, the base model for almost forty-six thousand dollars is. The equipment is okay. I mean, I active all-wheel drive is standard, 18-inch wheels, 10.25-inch uh, uh, infotainment display. Uh, you get Apple CarPlay, heated front seats, Android Auto. You know, it, it's it's the basics and the seating for seven or eight, depending on trim. I think based on what I've read, I mean, on the website, Mazda's website, that the GSL at 49.3 with a 19-inch wheel, power lift gate, leatherette, heated steering wheel, is probably your value leader. Um, but then, you know, when you step up to the GT, you get different wheels and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then, then comes the big inline six, 3.3 turbo mild hybrid engine. Uh, and then when you step up into the signature, you're looking at Napa, uh, Napa leather seating for six maple wood all over the place, twin 12.3 inch display. So you have to wait till you get to the $63,000 model to get dual 12.3 inch displays which are available in some Koreans for probably 20 some odd thousand dollars less. Um, the heated, cooled seats all over the place and these uh, admittedly lovely 21 inch wheels. Mean pills, I tell you, huh? mean pills. A and unfortunately, well, it's gonna get better before it, it gets worse. Okay, so I said power tailgate, right? Um, here we go, so. Decent speed, all good. So behind the third row of seats, yeah, I was prepared this time. Uh, you're looking at 423 liters of space, which is not much, but not so crazy off from the segment. With the third row down, you're looking at 1131 liters, I think, which is probably in the average as well. There isn't exactly any space under here. Um, but as far as boot space is concerned, I mean, I, I don't know. 90% of us who buy three row midsize SUVs never actually use the third row, which by the way, um, isn't exactly that comfortable. Uh, the well, comfortable the seat, yes. The elbow room, okay. Headroom for me, almost 5'10", fine, but the leg room is terrible. And not necessarily that there's no space, but the seat cushion is very, very low to the ground, meaning that I have my knees in my forehead or just about. But if you forget about the third row, oopsie, detail, I'll put that, I'll leave it there, whatever. Um, now, now you get the picture. This is where things take off for the CX-90. The, the, I mean, fit isn't entirely 
superb, right? But when you take a half step back, it's, it's beautiful. The materials, maple wood, the, 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 I guess that's aluminum or maybe it's plastic. I don't know. My wife would know. Um, but the way it all comes together is beautiful. This is a lovely touch too. The seats are extremely, extremely comfortable back here. Great support. And like I said, this is a six seater. So you have a lovely console right there for storage. Uh, heated cooled seat buttons are, as you can see right there with your own HVAC controls. Uh, that seat is actually way far back, but otherwise the amount of space back here is great. And the seats obviously uh, roll fore and aft, and this is as far back as they go. If you're a family of four, such as I, I mean, this is fantastic. It works out beautifully. And look, the, the cheering carries on over here. I mean, again, the, the materials, just the presentation, it's beautiful. I love the switch gear. It's a, I think I said the exact same thing in the CX-50. It's beautiful. Um, and, and there's a voluntary simplicity to the way everything comes together. Uh, but it, it's kind of like peppered with little f details like this. It's, it's gorgeous. It's really, really nice. I'll zoom in for a second. There we go. It's, it's lovely. And I mean, you can see the Napa leather. I mean, it's rich. It's supple. It's great. Uh, lumbar adjustment. Uh, love this insert here. You know, too bad about my shadow. But it's really, really nice. So I think what we'll do now is we'll jump in and start it up. And while it insists on telling me that it's running, just show you the 12.3 inch display here, which is coupled to the other 12.3 inch display. Um, as, as it is, I mean, it's, it's configurable via mostly the drive modes. So sport, I think you saw the original gauges, how they looked and there you go. And you go into off-road and there you go. I've been doing 98% of my driving in normal, just letting you know now. Uh, that's lovely. The steering wheel is a, uh, Beautiful grip, the layout, the controls, very straightforward. No haptic funny business going on here. It's just very straightforward and it works quite, quite well. 12.3 inch display, which as we know with Mazda, when you're moving around, um, and in this case, when you're not, uh, it's not touch sensitive, which is very unfortunate. Um, mostly because, well, in my case, I get to drive a lot of cars. I'm blessed, I know and I'm used to it and it's so much more intuitive and user-friendly. However, I must say that even compared to the CX-50 very recently, this is actually quicker and somehow easier to operate. Perhaps it's because it's still fresh in my memory, um, but there's no way that this is a premium feature. The size of the screen, maybe. But the fact that you can't access it via touch, that's, that's not premium. It's not even a safety uh, function as far as I'm concerned because you have to look down here and then look up here and then, uh, is that what I wanted? No, and then you gotta look back here and go back and there's, there are too many ways around. Plus you don't have to, right? You in fact have to lower your eyes on occasion when you're working a wheel, especially when you go into CarPlay which I won't do because then I'll lose the, the, the mic function on my phone. But you have to rotate the wheel so often to get to the menu that you want. Anyway, so many words to say that I still don't agree with Mazda's decision there. But do I ever over here? This is almost like a throwback series of controls for HVAC. I mean, everything is here, your fan on off defrost cooled heated heated and these little toggle switch kind of buttons for uh, the climate controls it's just fantastic this is probably more to do with the fact that well Mazda doesn't want you to be distracted while you're driving and that well the average buyer is not going to be 28 let's put it that way storage is okay um, you know kind of okay this is kind of okay same thing for the door bins uh, that's maybe another one of my slight issues. I mean, this is a, that's the shifter. So that's drive, reverse, and then back into park. There's one step too many there. I don't, I don't quite get it, but you don't have any storage down here, sadly, despite this little electronic shifter. Yeah, I know. I'm so negative, negative Nelly. And visibility is okay, actually. Uh, when you're up here, I'm going to Get, come closer to my face uh, there's a nice big opening right there despite the relatively sizable base of the a pillar but it's in fact it's not that big and you can you know kind of your eyes can reach around 
Uh, that works out beautifully. Um, but now, yeah, the drive. Let's go. Now the beard is getting long. I don't know. I just do those things. Yes, we're about to take off. Um, the I don't know where to begin, so let's just begin. The the expectations for such a vehicle are that for the price it will be refined it will be soft quiet comfortable um, not quite plush but you know very nice and remember the thing i said about the brand you know influencing whatnot the thing is that this is a mazda first and foremost right and what is mazda known for vehicles that are very driver oriented and frankly i don't know that drivers are looking for three row mid-size suvs and that's where the cx90 loses one of the two reasons essentially where it loses a lot of its of its appeal, of the potential interest someone can have in it. Because with the 21 inch wheels, despite a multi-link rear suspension, despite you know a great platform, the ride quality is not very good. I know I'm standing still again, but you know, that's what happens when you live in the city. The I feel every nook, cranny, road irregularity, and occasionally. I mean, depending on the speed and, and the rhythm of the undulations or road imperfections, I get the impression that there's just too much going on, that, that the primary focus for the SCX90's chassis is handling and, and control that it loses a little bit of control over the weight, which is, by the way, about 4,900 pounds for this vehicle, which isn't crazy out of control. For the segment, to be quite honest, hey, we're moving. Um, but I don't know. I wanted something that has steering like this, which is very direct, very linear, uh, calculated assistance. Um, and I wanted a brake pedal with just enough travel as you get in this. Um, but I wanted a ride that was a little, a little suppler. See, I mean. I'm only doing 50 kilometers an hour and I'm going over just your typical road surface and there are a few noises going on on the inside and, and I'm just feeling everything, absolutely everything. It's far too dry, the ride quality, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, there's no, there's no give and, and it really, generally speaking, ruins the driving uh, experience for me. The other at fault issue. Well, I can tell you what's not at fault. And that's the inline turbocharged mild hybrid six cylinder engine. Oh my goodness, is it ever smooth. And under mild to, well, obviously heavy load, it generates wonderful melodies. Wow, wow, we. It, it, it's really, really nice. There are two versions, by the way, right? So you have the regular mild hybrid 3.3 turbo inline six, which gives you 280 HP, 332 pound-feet of torque. And then when you get to the GTP, I can't believe my memory, GT Plus, you get the high output version, which gives you 340 HP on 93 octane or 319 on regular fuel and 369 pound-feet of torque. So that makes this a fairly consistent, well, geez, that's well over the speed limit. What? No. Um, you know, really, really good muscle. And, and it's believable. I mean, even with four of us on board and towing 5,000 pounds, I have no reason to doubt that the CX-90 cannot pull its own weight plus its own weight around with relative ease. The downside to that is, I think Mazda says that you'll average about 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers. I'm averaging 11 and I'm not driving like this, obviously. So I'm thinking that in the winter, you're gonna be in the 12s easily, liters per 100 kilometers. 
which is a weird thing because it's Mazda and we're going efficient. They're pulling the plug in the MX-30 in the US because it's not selling, so it's a straight six. This SUV would have killed five years ago. Let's just put it that way. But because of one element, which I think is what it is, because I, the only options to me are, well, the I-stop, right? So I can turn the uh, start-stop off, which is what the mild hybrid handles, right? It's got a small battery, like a 0.33 kilowatt hour unit, which powers a small electric motor, which also, which in turn powers, you know, a bunch of accessories and all that. Um, the, the thing is, when I come to a full stop, with the engine off or on, whatever, the transmission, even if I've been sitting for a few seconds, seems like it's unsure if it cha should take off in second or first. There, did, I don't know if you could see that. That was, again, teeny tiny throttle input. I mean, I'm basically just brushing it and it wants to take off. This is an eight speed automatic. Um, and, it's consistent like that. And even when I, sh again, with, with the, the function on off, start, stop, it does it all the time. I'm gonna come to a full stop, just brush the throttle. Again, see, there. That also tells me that this is, this is not a premium driving experience as Mazda would wanna sell you. And you know, just going over a little cracks like that. Blacklisted for sure. But, I mean, look, my job is to, to report them. Call them as I see them, as, as I say. And I'm, I'm just not impressed with what I'm experiencing. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. Okay. That's, I stop off. I'm just going to do it again. I mean, under, at, at all times, the engine is essentially flawless. But I think it's the transmission that just has, needs to be recalibrated, retuned, uh, be less hunting for the proper gear and just maybe it has to settle and it won't settle until the very last second once there's throttle input being given. So the engine will not shut off. Yeah, go ahead, my friend. Again, it's shifting into second. It, everything is kind of urgent. See, it goes into third, it's nice. Fourth, it's nice. And fifth is nice. So start, stop, there's no fun in this. Overall, what can I say? Well, I've said it. I'm not a big fan of this thing. It's, it's beautiful, presents so well on the inside. But and then the pricing and design doesn't blow my mind and the driving experience just doesn't do it for me. I'd, I mean, as much as I'd rather not say, I will say, I mean, I think I'd go for a Telluride instead. And if I want something a little bit more aggressive looking, you get an X-Line. Otherwise, you get, I forget what the top trim is. <laughs> it's terrible. My memory shot. Um, you know, on a four-year lease, for example. <sighs> My goodness. I mean, the, the efforts are phenomenal, but the, the final execution still needs some fine-tuning as far as I'm concerned. I told you it was going to be a long video. Thank you for hanging around, if you did.